Malky Pablo, better known as Billionaire Pab, is regarded to many as the greatest player to ever play, and best known for his slick defense and amazing counter punching. He has the ability to figure opponents out and adjust faster than anyone has seen before. But will that be enough versus Martial Mind, one of the most dominant mixed martial artist strikers the game has ever seen? He is a 101 time world champion and has over 40 successful title defenses with a whopping 60% connect ratio. His reign has been over 10 years. If he connects once, he will close the show. Who are you picking? Boxing or MMA? Are you going for Malky's amazing timing and defensive technique? Or are you going for the amazing accuracy and relentless technical aggression of Marshall? This will be electrifying. You don't want to miss it. August the 9th, tune in. Good evening, everybody. Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and welcome to a sold-out boardwalk hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey, for our main event. Ten rounds, middleweight action. Each man comes into this fight supremely confident, expecting to deliver a W. He's the kind of fighter who you just know has no self-doubts. Look at the way he's making his way down to the ring right now. You can see it in his eyes. Okay, guys, we went over the rules in the dressing room. Let's touch gloves. All righty, guys, welcome to the fight. Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather, Marshall Mind versus Marky Pablo. The fight is done. The fight is done. And here it is. We are going to show you guys the fight. And I hope you guys enjoy the fight. Um, I'm not going to commentate through the whole entire fight. I, I actually didn't do a live commentary for this one. I, I was trying my very best to focus through the whole entire fight. And uh, I, I don't think you guys want to listen to me talk through the whole entire fight. So I'm going to stop the commentary right here. Um, enjoy the fight. Hope you guys enjoy it. It was an amazing experience sharing the ring with a player as good, as realistic. That's the part that really, that's the part that I love the most. I mean, forget everything, but it's just sharing the ring with a player that approaches the game in such a realistic way. And it's so technical. That's, that's what I love. So... I'm going to leave it at, at, at this right here. Right there, I get dropped. Oh, <laughs> it hasn't even started, and he already dropped me. But uh, enjoy the fight. Enjoy the fight. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments section, and I will see you very shortly. Enjoy. Final 10 seconds of round number one. Able to cover up along the belt line, blocks that one. So he scores a knockdown in the last round. Now he gets to settle down and gather himself a bit. Do you go after it? Do you get super aggressive here having had your man hurt? Or do you still have to employ a certain amount of caution? It's kind of like being at the carnival. You know, you just you just hit the bullseye and you got that big, big stuffed animal you can give to your wife or your girlfriend. But now he doesn't want you to go away with that. Oh, no. No, no. He tells you, wait a minute, try again. You could trade that in for something either bigger. But you might lose the one you have already. That's the question. Irish is coming out to fight this round after being knocked down in the previous round. Teddy, any idea? Do you think he's recouped enough here? Well, we're going to find out very quickly by looking at his legs. On, You're going to look boxes. downstairs just like you look downstairs in the basement of a house to see whether or not those bricks are in place or whether or not some of the mortar has kind of disappeared and the bricks are a little loose. We want to see if those legs are stable if they're firm. He digs in with an uppercut after blocking that shot away. What? What? Unable to connect. 
by Irish. Halfway through round number two. Solid one-two by Irish. Good clean shot, returning fire. Well done by Irish. Trying to go downstairs, but off target. Carries that punch intended for the head. Good strong combo. Final 10 seconds. And that round comes to an end. And you know, I've turned to you many times throughout our careers broadcasting together and said, why is this guy not throwing punches? I just don't get it, Teddy. Well, there's two reasons usually. One is he's not in shape. In his case, I think he's in shape. He doesn't want to throw. I know that boggles your mind, too. What do you mean he doesn't want to throw? You think it to yourself. He's a fighter. He's in the ring. He knows that he has to throw punches. But if he throws punches, he also has to put himself in a position where the guy's going to throw back. That means he has to take more chances. And some guys would rather not take those chances. He takes a shot and then commits to giving one right back. Irish's punch didn't come close. Blocks that belt line well. Irish is being very patient here, but it's with a plan in mind. Yeah, it is with a plan in mind, and that's why he's such a successful fighter. He's trying to lure his opponent into a mistake. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. Needs to improve that accuracy. Missed with the headshot. And you can see he wanted to do that as he holds on there. Talk. And now you see the southpaw pulling the trigger with the straight left. And that's what fighters do. Pulls the trigger right away after taking one. Beautiful, beautiful. Nice movement there. Keep that up. Now keep moving. Keep moving. There you go. That's the best. Beginning of round number four. Teddy, the way your scorecard reads, he's up three rounds to zip. Good, accurate punching, earning him that lead. Yeah, very conservative. Hasn't wasted anything. But, as you just touched on, has made everything count. Nice block. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Oh, he is stunned. He could go down. Scores up top with a left. He was stunned, now he's in control. Momentum so critical. And that's the thing about this boxing game. One second you're in control, the next second you're not. Teddy, there are opportunities that are here for him, aren't there? Yeah, counterpunch opportunities because he's got an opponent who's walking in a little bit. Now he has a chance to start to chuck something back at him a little. Nice work. Some fine fundamentals. Good counter punch. Nice mousetrap there. He let him in beautifully. He didn't use cheese. He used distance.
Just not there. Straight right hand off the mark. Work the body, kid. Body shot. Unable to land that shot. Fourth round now with its last 10 seconds. Good look at right hand after he got hit. This has been a very entertaining fight. A little time to reflect here at the end of this round. My thoughts being this. I would really be surprised if we go to a decision here. It just has that kind of feel to it. Yeah, it has a feel to me like going to one of those places where you can eat all the pasta you can for one price, you know? And some guys get carried away. They eat about five bowls. Well, these guys, they're going to have a stomach ache at the end. Somebody is going to wind up not standing at the end. Irish is just not showing me enough offense right now. He's, I mean, I understand he did get hurt earlier. He did. But he still has to put something on, forth. Yeah, he does. It's kind of like that kid who gets his hand caught in a cookie jar. You know, <laughs> you're not going to give up eating cookies. You still have a sweet tooth. You want to still go back and get that snack. You better find another way. He needs to find another way. And now he scores well with a straight right. Had his target in mind, but just missed. And there he counters back against his opponent. Still plenty of time to work here in round number five. A minute and a half to go. Well, what do they say, Teddy? Something's got to stick. That combination was something. Well, you know what it was? The first couple punches were throwaway punches. Set up the later punches. And now a well-placed hook to the head. Trying to erode away that body with the combination punching. Keep working the jack. Good, good. Irish is able to land a nice clean left hand. Well, that's yet another round that he won, and Teddy, he's in great shape. What, what were you hearing out of his training camp as to how he got so conditioned? Well, we were hearing that he was doing his road work, wearing knapsacks with 20 pounds of sand in them, running uphill. I mean, that's one of them. Also, instead of taking minute rest and sparring, he was taking 20-second, 30-second rest. It's showing right now. Good job protecting himself. Really frustrating his opponent now. As he's so defensively sound, it doesn't make for an easy target. No, it doesn't. And it makes for a very frustrating night for his opponent. I see his opponent now, if you notice, he's getting a little tentative. He's afraid to let the punches go because when he misses, he's worried he's going to leave an opening. Good-looking two-punch combination there. Halfway through round six. Yeah, you got this. You got this one, baby. Oh, and he returns fire with a left hand. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. That's a good block by Irish. Working our way towards the bell. Last 10 seconds of the sixth. Oh! 
and round six comes to an end. I'm not gonna he's winning the fight. I mean, don't don't tell me anything different than he's winning the fight. Yeah, except at the end of the fight, sometimes these judges, they do tell you things differently. Right. Hopefully that's not the case. Well, he's, he's up way on the punch stats. I know he's ahead on your scorecard, and you can just tell everything that's happening in the ring, he's in control. Stay close to this guy. Get close to him. Get close to him, all right? Body, body, up. Okay? Finish with the right. uppercut to the head. It's over. The action starts up again, but it's only favored one man. Hard to see this fight going the distance based on what we've witnessed so far. Good block by Irish. Irish is wanting the counter punch here. But that doesn't seem the route to go here in this fight, Teddy. No, he has to be honest with himself and see that. But, you know, people under pressure in all walks of life, you know, in the ring, especially, you see it right away. You, you kind of peek at it right away. It's obvious. Maybe, maybe he doesn't want to see what he has to see because then he would have to discipline himself. He's not ready to do that. Then he would have to make the change. Maybe he just wants to leave it this way. At the end of the day, people are going to say, oh, that guy fought kind of fight that, you know, hard to fight with, you know, and he has an excuse. Maybe that's what's going on right now. Halfway through the seventh round. Well placed, Jeff straight. Volume punching to the body there. On, wow, a big flush blow, the left hand by Irish. Gets rid of that effort. Ten seconds to go in the seventh. Goes up top with a right hand. And that's the end of round seven. That's nice work, baby. Real nice work. I don't want to see no one punch. Throwing the uppercut, but I need to see another punch right at him. He steps in. Teddy's scorecard through seven rounds. Irish is trailing by a significant margin. But, Teddy, I think he's still a fresh fighter. How do you see it? That's the problem. I see it the same way. And I'd be asking the question, why are you fresh? What do we come here to do? Just to waltz around, or did we come here to fight, to win? He throws a big wide punch and leaves himself wide open. Well, it's like leaving your window open in your house in the middle of winter. You know, a lot of cold air is going to come in. Guess what? Some hooks are coming in soon. Come on, seconds to go halfway through round eight blocks a shot and pulls the trigger blocks that low and then a counter uppercut Punch. Clock counting down here in round number eight. Ten seconds to go. 
there is hardly a doubt as to what this result will be. I know anything can happen, but all that's happened all night long is one guy punishing the other. Well, he looks like Kobe Bryant on a good night when that basket is 20 feet big. I mean, he just can't miss. They are back to action here, but that action has only favored one man. Completely one-sided. Hard to see the scorecards coming into play here with how dominating he's been. Finish with the hook. Oh, what an exchange! Body shot, body shot. Irish is missing punches here. Now, the good news is he's throwing punches, but Teddy needs to be more accurate. Well, can I give you the bad news? Please. He's throwing them to the wrong place. He's throwing them upstairs. He should throw them downstairs. This guy's moving his head. You go downstairs, you take away that head movement. Then you find them upstairs. He got hit, but he sends it right back. Ninety seconds into the ninth round. Takes one, but gives one. Good work by Irish. He's showing what a skilled fighter he is with the counter punches. Well, the old times used to say when you calm in there, when you're controlling there, you can make him do what you want. He made him tie his shoelaces right there. Go, him. Keep doing what you do. Watch An accurate look. left by Ira. Hitting his mark there, Good going upstairs. Job, Good job. Locks it away. See? Last round, champ. No need to get into a brawl with this guy, okay? That's what he wants. This is round number 10, scheduled for 10. Worked out really well, throwing off the right hand after getting tagged like that. Head body. Come on, champ. Head body. That's right. Irish is doing well here with that two-punch combination. Good job staying away from the danger there. He's got that certain something that's a well-acquired skill in this craft of boxing, and that is superb defense, and it's on target tonight. It is. The old-timers would say, you know, that's the hard thing is to learn defense. You know, the easy part, the fun part is letting your hands go. So he's got the hard part down. Guess what? He's enjoying the fun part right now because of it. Halfway through this 10th and final round. Yeah, baby, good work, good work. Last dance, last chance. Last minute of the last round. It's all right, keep moving, keep moving. And now a little combination punching, landing both shots. Irish is swinging and missing like he's at bat right there. That punch was nowhere near his opponent. Ten seconds to go in this, the final round. Well, you should have your judge's license taken away if you don't see this one the obvious way, Teddy. If one of these judges dare go another direction with this, I want their picture up on a post office board. Most wanted poster. Yes, sir. Now, right now, what we want is to hear those obvious scorecards, so we'll send it up to the ring.
What is up guys, this is your boy Kid Ray, aka Fighting His Finest, and in this matchup we got me versus Boxing IQ 101, one of my friends on PlayStation 3, and probably the best head-to-head -head fighter I've ever come across. As you can see there, he's had a record of 103 wins and no losses, and I'm not going to even lie, I'm not going to even start to act like it was a competitive close fight. This is a video that I'm bringing you for the first time with me completely getting my ass handed to me. Like, he completely decimated me. This is the worst loss I had on fight night in about three to four months. Last, last fight that I had where I was getting my ass handed to me this bad was during the summer when I met my teacher, Dope Boy 78 and... I was 90 and 15 at the time. You know, I wasn't too bad. There was still a lot of stuff I didn't know about the game. But, you know, I was learning and I was watching other people and taking some of the stuff they did and labbing out, practicing, and picking some things up on my own and, you know, implementing certain strategies. But I was still younging at the time. Right now, I consider myself to be a complete master of the game. But in this fight, it shows, still shows me that there's still a lot a discipline I must learn in my styles and how I take fights and how I do things uh, recently I'm not gonna lie I, I've been tooting my own horn been a little prideful almost like a relapse where I feel nobody's better than me but you know I, I really believe in my name as being fight night's finest because I do believe I'm probably the best player on OWC in my opinion and from what I've seen um, on fight night on the PlayStation 3. This this all the good guys in here too, man. Just because you're sometimes the best doesn't mean you don't lose. In his case, I will have to say that isn't true, cause I haven't, like I said, haven't got my ass handed to me this badly in such a long time. So you know, it was a very humbling experience this fight, and it shows me that not that I don't know a lot about the game. I just feel I have to implement what I know better into different strategies and things. Uh. Right from the beginning, if you notice, I'm still in South Pole stance. Kawasaki is a natural South Pole that, that was a stance in real boxing, you know. That's why it's put like that in the game. I'm not a South Pole fighter, even though I know how to fight South Pole. Uh, as you can see, I'm not doing too bad in terms of throwing combinations, but, you know, right from the beginning, I wanted to test his tendencies out as usual. My plan wasn't to win the first three rounds, as you're going to see. I stay in South Pole the entire time. Um, fighting, uh, 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 in fighting style. Um, I'm still kind of devastated by this loss because, like I said, I haven't lost this bad in a long time. But I just want to figure out what he's going to do, what he's about, what's his style, you know. Just gathering stuff in the first round, I could tell he is a defensive fighter. He's going to look for counter opportunities and he's going to fight tall. He's not a guy who's going to move around the ring too much. Uh, he's not going to come forward if he doesn't have to. And, you know, he is a very disciplined, good, solid boxer. And there's nothing else more to say about his style. It's exactly what it is. What you see is what you get. And I, my goal was to try to attack the body from the beginning, try to diminish the stamina right from the start. I saw um, a beatdown that Relapse was taking this morning on YouTube. And, you know, even though he did come back and get like a sweaty comeback, almost you could say that. Uh, he came back and he won the fight, and you know he did it by attacking the stamina. I mean, stamina attacks is something that I'm pretty good at, and you know I have showed it in previous videos like versus Ravage Land and others. But you know, there was a mistake I made in this game where I was going to the body for no reason. He wasn't throwing a combination, and then I went to the body. He just, I was just going to the body in order to land shots. Because I was having a tough time landing anything upstairs. As you can see there, I'm, I'm starting to get a little better on the countering. Kind of getting his timing down of his punches. But you know, I never really quite got all his combinations down. They were simple. But when he threw them, it was, was kind of hard for me to tell. Everybody normally has that I fight on OWC. Normally has a specific time to throw punches. Maybe they might wait three seconds. Or you might hit him on a combo and, and they immediately want to fire back. But in this case, in this in this instance, he was just literally waiting for the right opportunity to punch. So it's whenever he figured there was a hole in my offense 
that he could go ahead and counter back on me, he will go ahead and that's when he will throw back. Um, right now, it's still more the same. I'm still pressuring him. I'm still trying to get in his face. And you know, I'm still trying to learn his tendencies. And that's going to be basically for the first three rounds. And you know, recently, well, this isn't a recent topic. It's been a topic that's been on round, probably since round four. I didn't have round four. But it's probably been a, to a topic that's uh, been around for a long time. And that is, who is better? There's a certain, there's two different sets of fighters on this game. There's head-to-head -head guys, and then there's OWC guys. Yes, there's guys who fight both. Like I will fight both. I will fight head-to-head. -head. But mainly, I'm an OWC guy. That's where I, I guess you could say, I make my bread and butter is by going into OWC and fighting those type of fights. OWC is, as you probably already know, is just creating your own fighter building them up and then fighting other people's credit fighters online and head to head is using licensed boxes by licensed boxes we're talking about people who are famous you know who are actual pro boxes on the world level where you got guys like Roy Jones and company on the, on the game and use those guys to fight in head to head thing that I notice about head to head and OWC is you know it's pretty much the same thing but old um, head to head does have its flaws and so does OWC like OWC has like almost perfect block and if you know how to do it on head to head it's almost impossible to hit people I mean body blows are more effective in head to head than they are in OWC like I said there's, there's a bunch of differences you know even though I have quite a bit of time on the video to talk about them I, I'm not gonna really get into it but the argument is you know who is better is it head to head or is it OWC um, from what I experience, and this is just my personal experience, some other people might have different views on it, but what I've seen is that probably head-to-head -head guys are better. I'm talking about in terms of the cream of the crop versus the cream of the crop for head-to-head in -head OWC. I'll, I'll, I will give it to head-to-head, -to -head, but at the same time, I only fought people on their level on head to head. I've beaten some good head to head guys like Rosalind's Finest and other people on this game in their own mode. Like I said, I'm an OWC guy. But, you know, I haven't really taken the best of head to head and took them on in OWC where most likely I will shine or I'll probably come out on top. In this case here, I'm in his comfort zone. This is what he does, this is what he knows best. I do know how to fight head to head as you can see from my record I'm not too bad um, I can hold my own but versus the head to head guys like it's almost impossible to hit them where it's like every fight I normally have I'm probably in the 40 percent landing high 40 mid 40s sometimes 50s or 60s if they're bad and then they're normally always in the 30 percent and you're gonna see at the end of the scorecards here how the roles are kind of re reversed where I'm in the opposite position which means he just completely owned me uh, I'm not doing a too bad of a job at this point of controlling my stamina but right here is the fourth round and as you see I'm in orthodox stance right now I'm trying to take the fight to him I'm not playing no games no troubles um I'm looking to win now from right here on and Sadly, I can't force him to make an adjustment. Right now, I feel I'm winning the round. But once he lands those counters, uh, the rounds are going to pretty much go to him. And so is the rest of my confidence in order to win the fight. But the head-to-head -head guys, I feel like their defense is almost impossible to hit them. Uh, I had a guy on here that I fought. Like, his, his name isn't too pronounceable. Just only the middle part is MVM. Some good people have probably heard of him already. Um, Boxing IQ asked me about him at the end of this fight, actually. And, you know, he was almost impossible to hit. Like, I would probably land like three or two punches out of the entire round on the guy. And, you know, he would just pick his shots, and his defense was just so good. Um, he was also using Chad Dawson. Um, Chad Dawson in that fight, I was using Bernard Hopkins. And, you know, pretty much he destroyed me as well and then we did a fight where it was lightweight it was Pernell Whitaker versus Pernell Whitaker and I ended up rage quitting just out of the fact that one I don't like fighting somebody with the same boxer like if you have
Parnell Whitaker, I'm gonna choose somebody different. I'm not gonna choose Parnell Whitaker as well, but also just from being frustrated to the fact that I couldn't really hit him. I'm not a sore loser or anything, but you no, know, if you constantly putting out your best effort and it's not really producing any effects, you're you're gonna get frustrated. And you know, even if I try to change it up on him, it's pretty much gonna be the same thing. At this point in time in this fight, that it was which I'm commentating on now. Uh I can't really change up styles. I can't now decide to switch to an outside fighting style because once I try to stay on the outside, he's gonna take me apart because now he has the opportunity to come forward. The thing that's keeping me from going down at this point is the fact that I was coming forward. Now, as you can see, when I start to back up a bit, he starts to land more on me. Once I try to stay on the outside a bit, Hopkins uses his range, um, Dawson uses his range very well, and he starts to land more punches on me. So, even at this point in time, I'm recording this right after I fought him, so I don't really know what adjustments I could have made at the point. I'll probably have to go back and study the video a little bit, a little bit more, but... It's just complete domination that I um that I took in this fight, and like I said, it doesn't really happen too often. So it's a humbling and it's a learning experience for me. So in terms of the question of who's better in terms of each game mode of head to head versus OWC, I will have to say from what I've seen so far is head to head because. I thought I learned everything there is to know about the game on OWC, and now I feel that I'm an expert on it. I have never been dominated this badly by an opponent. Um, there has been times where I'll get maybe against one guy who, you know, he fights. There's a certain style that I just can't seem to handle. I know how to beat it. It's just something that gives me too much trouble to the fact where I don't want to try anymore and I just want to hurry up and end up getting the fight over with or I already know once I see it it's going to be a, a losing match for me just based on how I fight you know sometimes it's just styles and matchups when I say matchups I mean it's like certain people that you fight that have a certain style you know that gives you trouble not that you're not a good player it would just result in you getting a complete utter smackdown like I faced in this video and no the style that he's fighting right now normally doesn't give me too much trouble I, I normally can pick guys apart when, when they do stuff like this it's the constant step into the same direction that I normally would step with which would be my right which would give me too much trouble and then due to the fact that my fighter on OWC is an end fighter it would take too long to catch up So let me um stay concentrating on the gameplay I was just a bit of a topic that I wanted to discuss about head to head versus OWC and you know right here I'm still doing the same thing I'm just trying to throw more because I realized I can land about a three punch combination I could land one out of three I could probably land two right there he caught me right there and as you can see once I start to throw more punches I realize I can hit him more but he is firing him back he is firing back which does give him the round and because I'm throwing more and I'm missing more my punch accuracy is going down and you know it's the judges look for aggressiveness um effectiveness against aggression and by me going up there and throwing so many punches it's giving him the round because I'm not hitting him as much as I should for the amount of punches that I'm throwing out and by him just staying patient and staying defensive it's giving him the round and honestly, at this point in the, in the fight, and just for the rest of the fight, I have no counter to it. Normally, I could switch up to a certain style, like I might switch to outside fighting. I'm already, I'm not really inside fighting with the guy. I'm kind of, kind of boxing with him. It's kind of more of a, I'm desperate at this moment. I have to throw punches. I have to throw what I know. I have to do something to try and land, or something to create a counter. Countering I can't do because I can't pin down his timing when he's gonna throw a punch Sometimes as you can see when I pump block there I'm, I'm waiting for the receipt to come by so I could maybe hit him with a side step or I could back step or I could probably move my head a bit and get a counter off of it However, that's not the case right now because I don't know his timing so one I can't control the amount of counters that I land and land or throw more counters than he does so that's one part that's not going to give me an around two I'm being more aggressive 
I'm throwing a lot more punches because I'm desperate and I need to land in order to win the rounds. My defense is not doing too bad of a job, but the difference in the round is that one, he's being more patient, two, I'm throwing more, and three, he's actually finding counters. So at the point in this fight, I, I didn't really have a counter to it. One thing I think I could have done better was probably, now that I think on it, it's probably just be more defensive, you know, probably not be so aggressive. I was landing <gasps> power punches with that push straight or just a push to the body, um, just um, push and then throw a punch afterwards, which will give me an opportunity to land. But it wasn't really going to, unless if I spammed it, which I probably could, I wasn't going to win the round anyway, especially with him getting the counters. Uh, if you land more counters, you're nine times out of ten going to win the round because of your effectiveness against um, aggression, which is something that the game menu says that the judge's scorecard looks for whenever it's given determine who won or lost a round. You know, not that the judge's court, um, scoring on this game is perfect because it's far from it. There's times where I landed way more to my, than my opponent, landed more power punches and counter shots. And they still gave my opponent the round. So it's not that it's perfect, but in this in this case it's doing a pretty damn good job of determining who's winning and losing the rounds. As you can see, due to my over aggression and my desperateness, I'm now low in stamina. So now things are gonna definitely get bad for me if I decide to take a step back. Well I take one right there, but when I say take a step back if I try to switch to outside fighting. As you can see right there, my hands are down, my stance is going, I'm tired, and you know, eventually he's going to realize that. I think he realizes it the next round coming up, actually. Uh, it's just going to be a round where my stamina is extremely low, where he's going to realize it, and then he's going to go and try to take advantage of it. But you know, it's the same strategy, you know, right now I'm not able to get inside, and then he just starts picking me off. I get a counter right there, but he starts picking me off once I can't get in close. Once I'm not chest to chest with him, and he's at mid range, he's just picking me apart. I don't do well at all from mid range. It's either I'm gonna be outside of his range and let him walk into shots and get hit, or I'm gonna be up close and I'm gonna try to land the best way I can and land all the punches I possibly can. But the best chance I had is when I've been close to him. Chest to head, chest to chest with him. Not when I've been on the outside. Uh, I mean, not when I've been at mid range. I do okay once I'm on the outside. Right here, you see I'm hurt and I'm not thrown here. I take a step back and once I start doing that, um, my stamina starts to regain a bit. But you know, then he has and I have to get back inside and then it's gonna cause me to get picked off more. Uh, I'm starting to be a little more defensive here because he hurt me and I want to kind of regain my health. Before I step back in there, because you know I'm I'm gonna have to slug it out with the guy in order to even have a chance of maybe getting a sweaty, which is not gonna happen. But this is my thinking at the moment. I think I gotta get close to him, and maybe I could throw punches. Maybe he's low in stamina. I mean, I noticed his stance isn't as if he had 100% stamina, so I'm thinking he's probably in the 70, 80 range, while I'm obviously down below 50%. Probably in. Mm, I'm about to say high 40s, low 40s, maybe high 30s. It's just not where my stamina should be in order for me to win. And as you can see right there, he's just picking me apart whenever I can. Whenever I'm at mid range and I'm not chest to chest in with him. So it's just more of the same in this fight. It's just more of the same beat down that I've been taking all fight. There's just nothing really much more I can do. The fight's pretty much lost. It's been lost once I realized switching to south, um, orthodox stance from southpaw stance. That the fight's been pretty much over since then when I realized I couldn't, I couldn't outbox him. I couldn't outland him. Uh, if I wanted to make a proper adjustment, I probably would have had to do it at that time. But now it's, it's just too late. I don't have the stamina to come back. Uh, head to head, there's not a good chance that you get a flash. So, it's just going to be more of the same for the rest of the fight. It's just me trying to. And right here, I get stunned by a left hook. And then he just wows out on me with some fast, quick punches. And that puts me down on the canvas for the first time. There's not going to be no chin checking for me today. And there's not going to be no sweaty comebacks neither. 
I'm up against the ropes. Right here, I'm still in Southpaw. I forget to switch back. And, you know, I try to fight back real quick. Maybe if I could hit a stamina from him being over aggressive, I could probably get a quick knockdown. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe I could test out something that he's doing. And, you know, <laughs> no, it's, nothing really changes. It's just the same just the same thing and you know I'm watching it now and I'm thinking why am I repeating the same cycle now I'm being now I'm up against the ropes and he stuns me and then takes me down again for the second knockdown that I received in the fight and, you know I'm looking at it now and I'm like what can I have possibly done it was just a perfect gameplay on his for uh, on his part and now that I'm not being the aggressor now I have to use my defense and see if it could help me to stay up. Cause now I'm now I'm getting beat down. I lean back there, get some good blocks off of it, and then you know he goes right back to what he's been doing. He goes right back to work. Now he can be aggressive. Now he can turn up the heat. Cause now I don't have what it takes to fight back. Not that I don't have combinations and stuff lined up, but I don't have the stamina. And my damage is low because I'm cut. And right there, I go down for the third time. All in one round, which never happens to me. I go down for the third time. And I get up here. Uh, I don't think I'm going to let this guy knock knock me out. That I will save for the end for you guys. But now I have to use my defense and kind of survive. And, you know, maybe look for a way to win the fight the next round. Which I don't do. I'm just at this point, I just don't want to get knocked out. So what I end up doing is... um. Right here, I'm thinking defense, defense, defense. I'm thinking just like a fighter would who gets tagged. And, you know, he knows he's hurt and he knows he can't win the fight. I'm just thinking, don't get knocked out now. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, he starts throwing back at me, of course. He starts taking aggressive style, waste some time there. I try to get off the ropes with the clinch, which will give me some separation. And then I'm able to move back around the ring. However, I go right back to the ropes. You know, normally I have a technique where I will move forward. And because people are so cautious on this game, they will step back. And then I will allow me to get back to the center of the ring. So right here now, I'm trying to use my defense and maybe throw a punch out every now and again. In order to keep me from getting knocked down. As you can see, he's being more aggressive here. And you might see me slip a few punches and I have an opportunity to counter back. However, I don't take them because my stamina is low and my health is pretty much low. So I don't have what it takes in order to counter back and you know really hurt him or do a lot of damage without him receiving a, without me receiving another shot. Right there, I use my head movement. That's a little defensive technique that I learned from one of my boys. Uh, you know, it, it keeps me from getting knocked down. Uh, it does its purpose uh, because my stamina is low, my blocking isn't as good. Uh, I lean down there to block those uppercuts to the body, and that doesn't really work. So I would I'd try to escape the ropes real quick, but you know it's still much more the same throwback. Whenever I'm just trying to keep him off me, and it it just ends up being the same thing. Now I feel like I'm fighting my boy Killer Gorilla, who always comes forward and always traps me up against the ropes. And you know I have to use like step backs, and I have to wait for opportunities to punch in between his combinations in order to throw back and uh, land some shots and win the round. And, um, yeah, when I fight Killer Gorilla, that's normally what ends up happening. But in those cases, I have the stamina and I have the health in order to fight back without worrying about too much of being knocked down in terms of being worried. And he stuns me right there, but that's after. That's a late hit. And I end up losing the fight. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This is your boy Kid Ray, a.k.a. Fight Night's Finest, fight Night's Finest <laughs> signing off. Fighting Malky Pablo is like fighting the computer on Mortal Kombat 2 in the arcade. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, basically when you fought anybody in Mortal Kombat 2, the, specifically the arcade version, it's almost as if the computer can read all of your inputs. And it doesn't matter what you do or anything. And that's what it felt like fighting this dude. And I don't know if he has some sort of super, super game developer controller or something like that. But his movement was crazy. But anyway, we're going to go straight to the fight. 
and we'll leave the outcome for you guys to watch. And all I'm going to say about this is, is that I feel bad for anybody that I fight next because I am going to be a better person after this fight. He calls himself the Mayweather of Fight Night. Well, now I'm going to be the Canelo, the black Canelo of Fight Night. So with that being said, I do want a rematch and the outcomes will be different. You guys enjoy. can the fans play on the fighters, the atmosphere of the arena when they know there's two guys meeting up that can bang? An immature fighter, a less experienced fighter can get caught up. He can try to satisfy the audience. That's a quick way to be going into the shower earlier than you wanted to. Look like the will of the wish, the old great Willie Peck. Made him miss, made him pay. Oh, and he's got something for him himself, and it's a left hand. Pacquiao's defense. Is it ever good? Look at how easy he's able to block those punches. That right hand over the top lands flush. And the countdown, the final moments of this round. Manny Pacquiao started at 106 pounds and then rose up and won a super bantamweight belt. But it really wasn't until November of 2003 when he claimed the featherweight title and TKOing Marco Antonio Barrera that he became that big spotlight kind of star. Yeah, that was his coming out party, so to speak. That's when the world found out just who and what Manny Pacquiao was. Manny Pacquiao blocks that punch. Scored well with that straight left. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. into his heart, into his soul. One, two, one, two. You see, he sits and waits and then strikes with that counter punch by the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya's banged by an uppercut. Committing to that midsection as the target with the combination punching. Nice 
not able to land the headshot. Ten clicks of the talk. Pacquiao's corner beaming right now. That was the round they wanted. You score a knockdown, you have momentum. De La Hoya is trying to get back in this round after being knocked down in the last round. But with just 60 seconds between rounds, Teddy, how much can really happen? How much can really benefit a fighter who was knocked down? Well, a lot has to happen. First of all, you hit him with that sponge. Some cold water on top of the head where you revigorate him a little bit. You know, get his senses back a little bit. And you have to talk to him. Once side he comes side, down, once you physically get him back on track, you look to see if he's okay, and then you have to tell him why he got dropped to begin with. While still fighting and continuing on as a major pay-per-view attraction, Oscar De La Hoya was able to start up his own promotional company. And he's been wildly successful, able to unseat some of the power brokers of the game. Yeah, he has. Well, he's used his name, you know, to make money in the ring and outside the ring. It's a name that people are familiar with in this business. He's had a lot of help with Richard Schaefer, who has been his business partner. And he's done something that... With Oscar De La Hoya's back! By a left hand. You're not focusing. That's, That's a forceful two-punch combo by Oscar De La Hoya. You're still not moving enough. Move, move. Get away from those. Final 10 seconds. Not getting it done with that straight right hand. And that does it for this round. Pacquiao's power has been the biggest difference in this fight so far, Teddy. As we start round number four and we take a look at your scorecard, he's up two rounds to one. Yeah, because of that knockdown, that was the difference. But it's still close enough for his opponent, just using his jab, fundamentals, the things that he has to do, to still get back in it. Keeps his hands up defensively, protecting the head. seconds to go in round number four nice block by the golden boy Oscar De La Hoya De La Hoya is just a completely different fighter now I mean he was stunned earlier in this fight and since then there's just more of a defensive disposition to him yeah and the important thing right now is that sooner or later and I think it's gonna be sooner his opponent's gonna see the same thing and he's not gonna stay away he's gonna get more aggressive Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Committing to the work downstairs with the left. Fourth round now with its last ten seconds. Dave Hoya is putting forth an effort, but he's this not being effective yours. in that regard. You hear me? No, this is your not. fight. Keep it up. Keep and scoring it points. Reminds, he's a banger, too. He can punch a little. It reminds me of an old saying that a trainer once told me. It doesn't mean anything to have a big punch. It's kind of like having a military weapon, a bomb. What good is it if you don't have a missile to get it to the target? Right now, he needs a missile to get that punch. He needs to set it up, and he's not doing that. Do you 
you see any way in which he can take his opponent's aggression and turn it against him? Yeah, the perfect way. I mean, boxing one-on-one, counterpunching. You got a guy coming at you, no better way than to change his mind. Make him miss, make him pay. Great ability. Now we're going to find out what else he is. Stairs. Oh, and he stays downstairs. Manny Pacquiao is making for a very frustrating round now for his opponent because he's moving so much. He's really utilizing that ring and showing that he's got the better footwork. Yeah, he's doing what the old times would say, Joe. He's giving angles, keeping his opponent off balance. His opponent is strong, but he needs to be set to punch. He's making sure he doesn't allow him to get set. Doesn't give him that kind of landscape. Dave Hoya's hit by a counter punch there. Way through round six. Good flush, straight left hand. He just do it. Oscar De La Hoya banged up by a left hand. Well, he just went from hunted to hunter. There it is. How is he gonna survive this? Once again, he hits the deck. He's gonna have to find a way. Dave Ahoy is up from the knockdown, but what we really want to look for is how he reacts in the coming moments of this fight. And now you see the southpaw pulling the trigger with the straight left. Seconds of the sixth round. That was yet another round where he just fight. looked like the Don't fresher, get lazy out there. better conditioned fighter. And here in these later stages of this fight, that's where you get the payoff. Well, the payoff is what we heard. We heard about coming into this fight that in training camp they were doing five minute rounds. We heard that, Joe. Not three minute, five minute rounds. He's getting the benefit right now of that. Blocks away that headshot. De La Hoya's not coming up with the results that you would want to see out of him. Now, he's trying to counterpunch Teddy, but it doesn't seem to be the answer. No, he kind of looks a little bit like that guy who went in to get his head dyed, you know? And he thought, he thought it was going to be just a little bit lighter, and it wound up being a lot lighter. And he said, wow, what the heck did I do? I didn't think I was going to look like this. I didn't think that I was going to box like this. A 
stabbing right hand by Oscar De La Hoya. Zoning in on that gut combination punch downstairs. That is exactly what the corner wanted to see. A good combination punch by the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. Relax, relax. De La Hoya's got to be moving more than this. Oh, I mean, you cannot win a fight just standing stationary like this. Well, yeah. you know, if his opponent could have, he would have gotten him to sign a contract and say, hey, I want you to stand right in front of me all night long so I can do whatever I want. And he's doing whatever he wants. First half of this fight has been very, very easy to score. You have him up big, as we see on your scorecard. That doesn't necessarily mean the second half of the fight's going to go that way, though. No, it doesn't. What he needs to do is watch that movie, The Gambler. I think it was The Gambler with James Conn, where, you know, he went to sleep, and he was ahead with all his games that he bet on. Thanks then he woke yourself. up and he caught up to see how much money he won. And they told him, you owe 30 grand. And he said, what do you mean I was ahead? We don't pay you off at half <laughs> The halfway point of round number eight. Oscar De La Hoya firing off that jab. Little volume punching to the body there. Pacquiao's jab is now carrying this fight for him from the outside. Yeah, because the jab is carrying the fight. You know, it all starts with that jab. And right now, that jab is leading the way. Last 10 seconds of the eighth round. Manny Pacquiao's Woo! reputation that is that of a guy who likes to punish an opponent. Well, then he's got a smile on his face tonight. Because all night long, that's all he's done. I don't know too many guys who don't like to punish their opponents. Show me one that doesn't. He's Especially right, when his opponent moving. has been so agreeable. Hoya's work rate is very high. I looked at the punch stats, and you can see that he's a busy guy. I don't think he's an effective guy, though. A lot of these aren't landing. Well, you have a reason to think that, Joe. Guess what? I agree. They're not landing. Halfway through the ninth round. Well, you could see what he wanted to do there, but unable to land that body shot.
over. Oscar De La Hoya's night has ended early here. Unable to go the distance, he couldn't rise up and beat the count.